Yeah, 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 that's true. Talk about that and how that can affect you as a legendary musician and a producer. Well, this, the, the thing is, is that whoever took it is a, is a, first of all, who steals equipment? My son left the garage open. He parked the Corvette in the garage, left the garage open, and some people came by, saw the garage open, saw my mad science case in there, took it, grabbed it, and I'm like, son, you seen the drum machine? He's like, no, I'm like, oh my God. All that, I keep warning you about leaving that damn garage open. You know, you just because we live in a white neighborhood, don't mean they ain't thieves either. Somebody white took my motherfucking drum machine, tried to sell it to the man, Bruce Forrad, who modified it for me and hooked it up. And in that fucking case, I had all the drum sounds that I used for like Eminem and 50 Cent and all my records, safe and sound and shit. I mean, multi-platinum sounds that people still use in the day, like them claps from in the club. So as a smart man, I always have a backup, but I got a backup MPC, right? With a, and a, a hard drive with all my sounds, but because they were twins and they were part of a set, when one of them dies, the other one dies too. So I'm selling the other one. I'm gonna put it on Twitter when I get back home in about 48 hours, and I'm gonna sell it with all the drum sounds, all the shit I did with Truth Hurts and and Jay Z. All the sounds are gonna be in it. You know, I'm gonna go ahead and give. It. I ain't even gonna. I ain't gonna charge over three grand for it. I ain't even gonna be stupid. It's like. If y'all gotta steal it, then fuck it. Y'all can have it. Don't it hurt my? I'd rather give it to you, motherfuckers. Um, Death Row, Death Row was Death Row was fun when the money was being spent and it was cool, but it wasn't fun when 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 niggas started to get violent and started to fight and tear up the studios and come running through there with guns and getting their head busted open and then being told not to tell and shit. It's like how you gonna beat a nigga up and then tell him don't tell? That motherfuckers, this eye is open. No, but not open. Split open, <laughs> but don't tell nobody. Here, here's some money. Don't don't say nothing. Death row, nigga. It's like, motherfuckers. Dead. Yeah, it was scary. We, niggas was fighting all the time. I witnessed some ass whoopings you wouldn't believe. Man, I'm gonna say some names. This one nigga, man, particularly, Suge thought the motherfucker stole some jewelry. Suge, I know you're gonna see this shit too, Simon. I'm, yeah, I'm talking about you, nigga. Do something. Suge thought the nigga AMG stole some jewelry out of his motherfucking safe. And told me to bring AMG back to the to the hotel. I went back like, man, he ain't did it. Suge jumped on AMG and started beating him up. I'm like, Suge, man, what's wrong with you? AMG was like, man, oh, right. I grabbed, I went in the fucking safe and found the jewelry. Cause it was a safe, a black felt safe with black felt in it, and all the jewelry boxes was black felt. You couldn't see him in the motherfucker. They was in, he had he had like an eighty thousand dollar necklace for his mama. I see why he was mad. I'm sure the statute of limitations done ran out and Suge can't go to jail for that. But Suge, you beat that nigga ass, man. Is this on allhiphop.com? That's funny. As oh, can I say something else? Can I out somebody? It's this nigga, hey, dude. It wasn't Suge that brought down Death Row either. It was Trayvon Lane, bitch ass, scary ass nigga, got that chain took and then got Tupac in that fight. And then that's how Tupac got shot because he got he, Trayvon Lane, the little, he was like the little bull, he was like a instigator. It's always the one that don't mean nothing that bring the whole house of cars down. Trayvon Lane, you ought to be real proud of yourself. You's a bitch ass nigga, nigga. You fucked it up for everybody. <laughs> be proud, nigga. You need an award for hope. I ain't scared of none of you motherfuckers and you know it. Roger Trotman was the best. Most talented motherfucker in the world. Curtis Mayfield is my favorite. It's so many, like even Aaliyah, like what her and Timberland was doing. Like these are some incredible motherfuckers we can't get back. Music, we lost all the best motherfuckers. We, we're pretty much missing the whole A-team of hip hop and R&B right now. The, the one thing about the 90s, it went by too fast. I think we took it for granted. We didn't think that shit was ever gonna end. Everybody was number one. We was dropping hit records at will, doing movie score, having fun. And then it got ignorant. And it, it, it became not fun. Then it got scary and dark and, you know, and, and, and detrimental. How could something so beautiful turn so fucking putrid and weird? What's your most classic iconic moment? Um, when I was in the same room with Colin Powell and Russell Simmons and Dr. Dre and Quincy Jones, I felt like I belonged. That was like, that was at the Hip Hop Summit, the first Hip Hop Summit that um, Russell Simmons threw in New York. We all flew out there and it was... It was pretty powerful, you know, that was that was pretty iconic. Then there was another one when I was in the studio with Janet Jackson, uh, working on her single that Jimmy Jam and Terry Lewis put me up on, you know, to let me do the remix for All For You. And then MTV asked me to DJ for her Icon show. They gave her an Icon Award 
and had me DJ for it. And I'm talking about Starstruck. It sure was hard to try to be cool around Janet motherfucking Janet. First of all, all I think about is Penny. She's she gonna forever be Penny to me. I'm really kicking back. I'm doing little bitty things. Like, you know, I just produced a video for, uh, I co-produced a video for Bone Thugs and Harmony, uh, Cypher that's on World Star. I helped Kendrick Lamar get on. I actually did a, a EA Sports video game with him called NBA Live 10 back in like 2010. I knew Kendrick was gonna be a motherfucking beast. I didn't just, I didn't know he was gonna take over the whole game, but you know, I helped Problem and you know, uh, Dom Kennedy and you know, the, the youngsters, you know what I mean? That's, that's kind of what I've been doing. Yo, what up? This is DJ Quick, the most controversial nigga from the Compton Tip. And I come from a street that they all call Spruce. And back in 87, we didn't have no truce. We was chilling with the homies. None of you sucker phonies. Some of the hoes was good to go and niggas was macaronis. I popped a hatchback on my rabbit and went by four fifths of ENJ because drinking was a habit. Sounds loud. Booming ass bass. We drunk the ENJ straight because we didn't want the chaser. That's what I'm talking about. I was that was I was 17. Shouts out to allhiphop.com.